what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? The great great grandson of Anna Short Harrington, who is said to have inspired Aunt Jemama, says he wants reparations because the actress's likeness was used by Quaker Oaks without his family being properly compensated. Earlier this month, Quaker Oaks acknowledged that Aunt Jemima's origins were based on a racial stereotype of a mammy and announced that the company would be removing the image and name. During that announcement, the company also promised a $5 million donation over the next five years to create meaningful, ongoing support and engagement in the black community. Not so fast, says Larnell Evans Jr., who's 47 years old. He says that that decision is an easy way for them to go. I guess you would say that's saving money, said Evans, who in 2014 filed a lawsuit against PepsiCo, the owner of Quaker Oaks, claiming they failed to pay royalties to Nancy Green, the enslaved woman who the original Aunt Jemima branding was based on in 1834, as well as their great-grandmother, Harrington. Evans and his nephew, Danez Hunter, who didn't have a lawyer and represented themselves during the lawsuit, asked for $2 billion and a share of the sales revenue. According to Evans, Harrington, who started portraying Aunt Jemama in 1935, had her own recipes, which were very unique. PepsiCo filed to dismiss the case, arguing that their 15 claims either were not recognized by law, weren't established with evidence, or were implausible, and that Evans and Hunter lacked the documentation that proved they were related to Harrington. We had a family tree. We have all the death certificates. We have the obituaries. There's no way they can say, oh, they're not related, Evans told the Daily Beast. I always knew she played Aunt Jemima. That's just a given fact. A bit of history, fam. It was in 1935 that Harrington was discovered by Quaker Oaks as she cooked pancakes at a New York fair. Harrington portrayed the character until 1954. She died in 1955 uh, in Santa Cruz at the age of 58, and she was buried at Oakwood Cemetery. That's some fascinating information. It's amazing how you can look at a character, a person or whatever, and for years and years and years and not know anything about the history, not even care to really know about the history. Now, this woman portrayed this character for 19 years of her life. I'm willing to bet whatever compensation she received was peanuts. She pr say back then they was doing black folks so bad, they probably gave her, they probably gave her a room and board and told her that's it, that's all you get. They probably made her sleep in the warehouse. I totally believe the grandsons, totally believe them. Well, the grandson, grandson I totally believe them because this is the type of stuff they used to do to black folks. And they're still doing it to an extent. Quaker Oaks been winning a long time. I know myself until I actually stopped buying pancake mix and stuff about 10 years ago. That's all I ever bought was Aunt Jemima. So, I know they made some money. Hundreds of millions, if not billions. It's been that long. Yeah, it got to be billions. This is way back, dates all the way back to 1935 when she was discovered. So, yeah, they made the bread. They made it. They've been using that man's great-great-grandmother's image for all these years, decades and decades and decades without compensating the family. And for all you people out there 
who say, well, the family didn't work. They didn't earn any money, you know. The descendants didn't earn any money. They used their great-grandmother image, not theirs. You the same bastards that want something when your grandmother died, checking the wheel. You ain't work for nothing, but you check it. That's why you have relatives, survivors, loved ones left behind. So that the work that you put in is properly compensated in the event of your demise. Quaker Oaks, PepsiCo. In the great words of Aunt Esther on Sanford and Son. Pay up, sucker. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?